Speaking of causing trouble, apparently Tony would not let well enough alone after he went on his media blitz or fritz, whichever the terminology is. Well, again, we've all been talking about the impending Tuesday night fight that happened this past week, NXT on their normal night, AEW having to move to a different night. And all of a sudden, then you started hearing about different things happening back and forth, mainly because of Twitter. On October 9th, Tony Khan tweeted out, The first 30 minutes of Title Tuesday AEW Dynamite will be commercial-free on TBS tomorrow night. Remember, AEW Dynamite is in a special time slot tomorrow. One week only, Tuesday, AEW Dynamite, Title Tuesday. <laughs> On TBS, tomorrow night. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> is way, this one tweet? This is one tweet It keeps going because it says show more, but uh, this is an image of the tweet, not the actual tweet, so I can't see what show more was. Well, but okay, I and good for him to convey the information, but it got a little busy, but that, yeah, that's something a promoter should do, just as Tony usually is a little wordy, but nothing... Nothing just crazy go mad there. Honest question, if there was Twitter in the 50s or 60s, how would a promoter like Nick Goulas have used Twitter? Would it have been similar? Oh, good Lord. No, seriously, tonight, no, we're going to be here wouldn't... tonight, tonight, come out tonight. Well, no, that's, that's the thing is that, you know, if you're talking about a Nick Goulas, it, it would have been uh, Bob Luce. Can you imagine that? And I made death. Blood, chaos, violent, hate. You know, that's, it's old carny circus of, you know, hyperbole and, and carnival barkership. But in, that was 70 years ago, you, you know, or at least 50 years ago, if you're talking about Nick. And it now, especially on a national television show, again, you know, in the in the sixties and seventies, the regional sports networks were a little primitive, also whether it be football or college sports or whatever. So you didn't necessarily expect to see Howard Cosell doing the goddamn high school Wildcats in your local market. Some of these shows were local. Some of the promoters were best kept local. But in this day and age, on a national television show, one would expect a little more professionalism, especially from a multi-million dollar company where people could write this shit for him and he could just bless it or push the button for it if he wanted to tweet it himself and make it a little more succinct and a little more professional. Well, responding to Tony was a Twitter user named Ace. He used a picture of Seth Rollins and it says, We not watching, bucko. <laughs> To which Tony responded to Ace, Okay, we won't see you tomorrow night for Title Tuesday, AEW Dynamite then, with a gif of Roddy Strong, and it says, who gives a fuck? Oh, I saw that because a bunch of people started tweeting that, that basically, I don't know how many followers, what was his name? Ace. Ace, I don't know how many followers he has, but he probably don't have the millions of dollars that Tony has, and he probably don't have the television presence Tony has, but Tony was responding to people like this individually, individual fans out there, and taking time to meme, go fuck yourself to them. Can you well, see Vince doing that? Well, for the record, he tweeted out, who gives a fuck, and to that point... A user named Agus responded to Tony or quote tweeted it, and he wrote, If Vince McMahon said this, there would be many failed AEW fans crying nonstop and furious. Three crying face emojis, hashtag hypocrites. To which Tony responded, <laughs> If Sir Vince McMahon said, th Oh, because the guy said, Sir. If Sir Vince McMahon, <laughs> yeah. I just noticed that Tony responded, if Sir Vince McMahon said this, it would be the least of his alleged misdeeds. Hashtag title Tuesday on TBS oh my. Tuesday, AEW Dynamite tonight. And that would be like Vince tweeting 
at Bischoff 30 years ago about, well, yeah, yeah, I got drunk and got hauled into that lawsuit in the, in the gold club or whatever the fuck. It's just, it, I mean, who is the wrestling executive that I have had the absolute least respect for in history? Oh, Jesus, Jim Hurd, George Scott, Vince Boom. Russo. Boom, no, Jim, no, no, you can't call shit stain an executive. He never ran, I'm talking to an executive, somebody running a company. Jim Hurd. Jim Hurd, Jim Hurd wouldn't have acted like this out in public and interacted with individual random fans like that they were, like that they're in fucking high school on Twitter, on the fucking social media or the Instagram or the fucking... FaceTime or whatever the fuck kids get a Snapchat. That's a big one. Yeah, well, uh, here, I got a big one for it. Well, don't put, you'll get arrested, sir. But later on, House of Wrestling, that's Nick Houseman's wrestling news site. It's it's H-A-U-S. See, I see what he's doing there. Well, he tweeted out an article. I don't have the article here, but the title of the article is Triple H and Shawn Michaels look to send Tony Khan a message. Exclusive. To which Tony Khan responded with an image from Curb Your Enthusiasm of two doors with the words bald asshole (laughs) spray painted on them. I have a message for them. See you tonight at a special Tuesday night AEW Dynamite. Title Fight Tuesday (laughs) at 8 p.m. 7 (sighs) p.m. Central on TBS. At least the first 30 minutes are commercial free. and. A big overrun tonight. And okay, uh, uh, Michaels is thinning out a little bit too, but obviously Triple H would be the bald asshole. He had a crew cut or a little bush up there last time I saw him. But again, what the... He's now, he's responding to people with wrestling websites writing, I don't even have any reason to believe by that title that it was a skewed article. They are. They were looking to send a message to Tony Khan. He's just writing what's going on. Well, fuck this fucking bald asshole. It's, it's completely in, unhinged at this point that he's responding to these people in this way. And it's like the, it's going to turn out like the uh, funny home video of the little guy going up and picking a fight with the big guy and the big guy reaching out and knocking him stiff and that's the end of it. Well, it appears next in the Twitter chain here, there were some fans talking about the match reviews from Title Tuesday on Cage Match, a site that ranks the <laughs> rankings of the fans who rank the matches. The rankings of the fans who rank the matches. Well, he was responding. It's very rank, from what I understand. A very rank site. Well, these are the fans that, whatever you want to say about them, they watch a lot of wrestling, and they have their opinions out there, but they watch everything, and he's still in that circle. So he responded to a few of them, apparently. And then, on Title Tuesday, Dynamite Reviews, amidst scores ones and threes, two totally unique users, who are definitely not both the same person, Use the very common expression, quote, shows how bad he is at being a normal person on the same day reviewing the same show. I, I, I don't even know how this fucking site works. And what are you saying to me that he is saying that they're putting up fake reviews under uh, presumed names or what is his bone of contention? That there were somehow a couple of negative reviews amongst all the other fans for AEW Dynamite or some of the matches, and those two people use a similar phrase, he's trying to act like a normal person. Which I've said on the show, to be honest. We would say everybody that's seen him has, has made that comment. It's not new. We're not breaking revolutionary ground here, but the point is, again, he's on cage match. And he's on Twitter. He just fired his biggest star, but he got another one to replace him, Edge. And he's about to make his TV debut on a show that's going to get its fucking ass kicked in the goddamn ratings. And he's got time to do this? Well, that was... Well, that tweet, I should say, someone responded to that named Magic Steam... Magic Stream, excuse me. Magic Stream... Woo-ah! 
<laughs> and it was an AI image of Shawn Michaels with a healthy head of hair holding up a plaque for Booker of the Year while smoking a cigar. And the person wrote, Seethe. To which Tony responded, Actually, I'm pretty sure that last night blew whatever chance he had at winning that award. The... Okay, number one, what... Does he think he had the better show? He got walloped. His show, for the most part, sucked. And... The other guys won and elevated all their fucking next generation of talent. How is how did he not get outbooked on this particular enterprise? Well, the people in cage match thought he had the better matches. So that makes him the better booker. Oh, but what does he have to do with the matches? The wrestlers in the ring are having those. He just writes the name down. Well, then Tony put on on Twitter. You do, do, do some of these young, impressionable, and I do use the word marks in this instance, do some people believe that when the booker books the matches, he writes down what they're supposed to do to each other back and forth? I don't think Do they think, think so. that's how it works? I don't think anyone thinks that the booker is the one writing down how everything should go. Then you you can book a match and it can be good or good or bad and you had the same input in it. Then it's up to the fucking players to run the play. But I digress. Go ahead. Well, then Tony tweeted out, Thank you all who watched AEW Dynamite title Tuesday last night. I thought last night was one of our best shows that we've ever done. The fans in Kansas City were tremendous. The wrestling was great. And last night was the best birthday that I've ever had. Thanks to all of you. To which a... Twitter user named Andrew <laughs> replied, we were watching NXT, big dog. <laughs> to which Tony replied once again. He, he, he replied back to this guy who he has never met, doesn't know anything of fucking about just some random fucking guy on Twitter. Well, then Tony responded, then I wasn't talking to you and you don't even follow me, so why reply? And once again, using the image of Roddy Strong. What was it? It cut off down here. Who gives a fuck, I guess? Who gives point. a fuck? Or go fuck yourself or whatever. So now I'm looking at... Uh, but now this is the day after the show. Has he addressed making mainstream news outlets for being anti-Semitic in the middle of a goddamn horrendous war where people have been butchered? No, and I Did think... Did he bring that up when he was fighting about numbers on Twitter? Not one comment. And again, it wasn't something that was just in a wrestling bubble. It was something starting to get attention. And Tony didn't say a word. Not one tweet about it. But then, I see here, people were talking on Twitter about the peak ratings viewership on NXT versus AEW, and Tony just decided to quote tweet someone and take a jab at Vince. One of the people, Dr. Randy Githrod, PhD, tweeted out, The difference is that Vince has the power and influence to take them cheap shots. He's earned the right to make them. Tony Khan is Vince if you order him from Timu. <laughs> you can shop like a billionaire, but you'll get the cheapest tat doing so. To which Tony quote tweeted, Yes, Vince has allegedly used his power and influence to shoot a lot of shots. Uh, so now he's doing cum jokes on Twitter with random fans. It is is there a fiddle slung around his neck? Well, Tony Tony Nero. Well, then we had another Twitter user named Rebel Kelly, 1982, tweet out what appears to be a fake image of Brian Alvarez saying that the ratings were 1.4 million to 650 thousand, which we know they were not. So. so this person tagged Tony and said, "This is not a war." To which Tony responded. I must have missed it when Brian tweeted that. So he's responding to anybody, <laughs> it seems like. Then, and this one, I must admit, when I saw this one, I thought it was a fake account. I didn't think it was really Tony Khan, and it was. He tweeted out October 12th, 11.46 a.m. This week, two active decades-long rating streaks from two great legends were ended. With all due respect, 
until this week's head-to-head AEW on TBS versus WWE on USA, neither John Cena nor Undertaker had ever been on a WWE show with under a million total viewers and under 400,000 in the demo. (laughs) That's, again, I thought that was a fake account. I thought it was like AI Tony Khan. I didn't think that was a real tweet. And it was. It was. And again, Undertaker wasn't even advertised. And he didn't even put his fucking outfit on. Or he made the gloves in it. He just rode his motorcycle out, dressed as he came. And made a personal appearance and did a choke slam. And as a matter of fact, I would hesitate to say that well, let's go through this uh, quickly in my mind. Is this past week the first time that Edge, a.k.a. Adam Copeland, has ever appeared on a television program for any wrestling company and been seen by fewer people? It works both ways. But but the, the difference is, it's like, The Undertaker and John Cena were making appearances on a local fucking hooping belch telethon, and they were there to wave at everybody, whereas Tony's fucking taken Adam Copeland from the WWE and exposed him to a smaller audience than he's ever wrestled on national television in front of before, if you're going by that logic. Age Adam Copeland is a legitimate member of his full-time roster. And he was on the other night in front of 500,000 people. And tell me when a WWE program with Edge approached that number. While meanwhile, if fucking Cody's the general manager, John Cena's in the corner, Undertaker comes out as a teased surprise. And they blow him out of the fucking water because people know who these people are and they care about them. Could, but just again, to reach that far and to try, it, it, like if it was John Cena versus The Undertaker, I guarantee you they'd have had over a million people. Fuck. Well, he wasn't done. As we are recording here on October. 13th as it is. Tony's on Twitter. Now that we finally got finished and the fucking infinity guy ran that fucking temporary cable from the road to your estate, your baronial mansion. Plus some time travel. Whoa, shit. They'll never even know. They'll never even know where we started, where we ended because of your technical fluvians. Well, a few hours ago as we are recording, here's Tony Khan on Twitter. This weekend marks one year since Mayo Clinic saved my mom's life. During her ordeal, many AEW talent came to me alleging WWE tampering, inducing them to break their contracts. I'll never forget these phone calls at her side in the hospital. It's when business became personal for me. This is nothing new. This is now another tweet. This is nothing new. I mentioned it last year after she came home. It's relevant today because she checked in for surgery one year ago today. As I've mentioned several times since, Mayo Clinic are heroes, and thanks to them, her recovery from a very grim outlook has been a miracle. So those were the uh, two tweets. But that's... Okay, it may be relevant or pertinent or imminent because it was one year ago today, but it also happens to be right after everybody on Twitter, including some of the people that used to support all of Tony's endeavors, have blistered him for acting like a fucking 12-year-old on Twitter arguing with people, trying to salvage a victory somehow, like, well, it's the first time that they ever beat us by this little kind of logic. And so now he's, well, it's personal because of what they did to me while my mom was sick. We're glad his mom got well. We don't want his mother to be sick. But if that's the only thing that ever made it his business personal, maybe that's the problem. The problem is 
it's it's never been a business. It's been personal, but not a personal grudge. He wants everybody to personally like him. And when they don't, and when he loses control of shit, and when they wipe their feet on him, or when somebody knocks what he thinks he does well, he melts down because he's not used to that because everybody has humored him because he owned everything. Well, then Tony <laughs> responded, uh, he quote tweeted his own tweet, and he said, if not that I should be surprised, but the same WWE avatar accounts that spam me every day, no matter what I say or what it's about, now turning their wrath to mom recovering from a near-death experience is why I straight hate these people to the <laughs> bottom of my heart with all my soul. Well, wait a minute. Who are all these? Are these the are these the WWE or is these the people that are knocking his mother on Twitter? Is anybody knocking his mother on Twitter? Why would you do that? I don't know. I don't know who has said that. Now, again, is he talking about WWE or the fans? Because he was talking about the Avatar accounts. Or, it, or does he say the WWE, the executives there are behind the Avatar accounts? I don't know. But again, if if. <laughs> I mean, w once again, all of the horrible things that are said by all these people, whether real or imagined people on Twitter, if you let that get to you, then you're fucked anyway, because that's what people do on the fucking thing. But a, 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 he should take his business personally, but not to the point where he's fucking bubbling over at Avatar fan accounts. Just try to do a better product and a better show and beat the other guy, right? Instead of arguing with... Some of these people may not be real people, and he's arguing with them. When I'm looking right now through it's some... It's one thing to blister some fake or real account with a goddamn smart-ass remark and then block them and go on just because it entertains other people. But to go back and forth... No, he definitely... I see here there's a few tweets where he... You know, someone would insult his mom, and he, my mom is stronger than you will ever be, and the original tweet is deleted, so you can't even see what it is. The person hopefully was embarrassed. Yeah. But then there's a lot of him responding to people who have had their own recent losses, saying that he's sorry for their loss. Maybe, you know, I hate to play armchair, not even Booker, but just trying to figure things out. Maybe, you know, maybe Tony's going through a rough time right now, personally, because of family medical reasons, and... You know, I don't know. I mean, he's this week. It can't just be the fact that NXT beat them because he had to know that was coming. It can't just be all the realities. Well, maybe it could be the realities that AEW is not growing. The crowds are getting smaller everywhere. The booking, the booking is getting less of a pass than it ever did before from people that gave it a pass traditionally. I can tell you from with some level of certainty from having experienced it, that when you've got all kinds of stress and a lot of shit's pissing you off, that sometimes it's one of the most minor little things that just sends you bubbling right over the top of fucking pissed off hill into violence fucking valley. And then you either, since Tony is not a violent person, you either lash out with a baseball bat or you get on Twitter, I guess. But it could be, it's, it can be a little thing on top of a whole mountain of bigger things that just didn't get you all the way over the edge. But he may need rest, confinement, treatment, counseling, chemicals, some of these things. We'll see. I mean... You know, you don't want to see a guy have a complete public meltdown like this, but maybe, I don't know who's there to no, tell him. No, it's much more fun when you can watch it in private. Well, I don't know who's there to tell him, but someone needs to tell him, get off Twitter. It's not helping you. It's not helping the company. It's embarrassing the talent. With all he does, how does he have time to read this shit? What, how does he even have the time? Because this is what he lives. He lives for the reaction of social media and message boards because that's where he comes from. His social skills are developed around that. So because of that, and because he still sees himself as the teenager on the message boards, that opinion means a lot to him. Whether it does to you or, or me or anyone else, it does to him. So when he sees an online reaction and the way it's been lately, 
with WWE's popularity in general and AEW's overall problems beyond the punk backstage issues, the on-air problems. With all of that, you've seen a large group of fans suddenly start going with the wave away from AEW because it's not the cool thing anymore and it's not the hot thing anymore and it's still his thing. And to him it is, unless he's lying to everyone at all these press conferences. (laughs) I'm not saying that it's not human nature and natural to like when people say good things about what you do or what or you or yourself or what you look like, whatever the case, compliments. But if you are not only searching those out, but also then your head's on fire about the people who are saying the the opposite, you've got to have some kind of goddamn confidence. And level-headedness, you got to be able to look in the mirror and see, am I doing what I believe is good? Or am I just convincing myself this is good because I did it? And if you can if you can say, I believe what I'm doing is good, and I believe it's getting more positive than negative feedback, and things are growing or moving along or whatever, then you're okay. And if it's, they got to say everything I do is great, or I'm going to have a fucking meltdown, you're in the wrong line of work. Well, one last thing before we wrap this up, and actually we're going to wrap the show up with this, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be back with music and everything next week, but it's been a crazy week and there's a lot going on. Yeah. But I'm trying to see where this originally started. There's a Twitter user named Travis Akers, or Ackers, I'm not exactly sure. He retweeted a TMZ article, AEW criticized for running anti-Semitic storyline amid war in Israel. And he said... We were watching AEW when this happened live last night. It was tasteless and a horrible decision by Tony Khan to pursue an angle woven with anti-Semitism. We changed the channel. AEW lost me as a fan with this one, which sucks because I really enjoyed their product. So he and put- I, yeah, I, there you go. That is, I'm not saying that everybody or even a majority or even half of the fans are going to, but there's some fans that are going to have that reaction and that's something they should have known. I felt similar to that too. So I understand. And I'm not a big AEW, you know, supporter other than like I pay for all their pay-per-view events that I watch them every (laughs) week. Beyond that, I don't support them at all. But Tony Khan jumped into Travis's DMs (laughs) I got the point that you didn't like the angle on the second tweet, Travis. Message was received hours ago. I don't think quote tweeting TMZ is doing much good. So I guess this is a second tweet. I didn't even see the first one. Wait a minute now, but hold on. So Travis tweeted these statements and put up the link to the article and expressed himself, but Tony doesn't even tweet him back. He did the direct message thing to him directly. Yeah, no, he dove into his DMs, as they say. I don't, I don't ever say that. So I'm just trying to figure out how this worked. So he specifically, now it's not even for an audience, it's just to tell this one guy what he thinks. And again, I don't know, I'm trying to see if this guy has a, a fan base, if he is something, and if he is, I'm sorry, I don't know this, but I don't know. But all right, well, he tweeted at this guy, and then he dove into the DMs, I should say, and then... Travis responded, how often do you slide into a fan's DMs to mock a legitimate critique? I I love AEW. In my opinion, you have the greatest roster in the entire industry. I've been to over a dozen AEW shows, have a couple of friends in the company, and have promoted your brand extensively. If I could recommend anything, it would be to not just acknowledge our legitimate concern, but address it head on non kayfabe on next week's dynamite and then tony responded to him i know exactly who you are in jacksonville that's why i reached out so that was the whole what that way he not anything about what he said but i know who you are that's how ba- that's how, what you did that's howard baum's old sir he 30 he thought he had heat with kevin sullivan and he went up to him and introduced himself and kevin said i who you are <laughs> <laughs> so tony didn't bother to respond to what he had said just i know who you are and i saw what you did and you ain't gonna get away with this good luck and what is that? i mean 
the fact that he responded that way in a DM and he hasn't said anything publicly to tie all of this the week of Tony Khan, uh, what did Jace call it over here? To Mr. Khan's wild ride. What do you make of that? The fact that he hasn't said a word publicly, but he would go into the DMs and give this guy shit almost for having the nerve to tweet out an article about it. I, I, I don't know why he won't. Obviously, I don't know why he won't get off Twitter with these random people. I can see why he wouldn't just want to come right out after the the big thing that he built up, the, the big battle, and come out and say, well, and they whooped the shit out of us. I, at the same point, I think that someone should have even just made a token statement from AEW management about if anyone was offended by, you know, the action, however they wanted to word it, even if they just, if anyone was offended by something that went on on the program, you can be assured it has been addressed and will not happen again. But no, he just argues like a kid over people that are knocking the losing effort he put on. Should a promoter be concerned? Should a promoter be worried or bothered if talent is upset by their behavior in public? Yes. Um, if, I mean, again, a lot of the great promoters did a lot of things in public, but in this particular vein for, again, the guy who runs a supposed multi, multi million dollar company who's on national TV, who already has looked this awkward in a variety of settings in the past to be arguing with individual fans on Twitter and knocking The Undertaker for making an unadvertised appearance that didn't draw a million people, it, it that's when the boys, I'm sure, are going, God almighty, he's not helping us or himself. And why can't he just leave this alone? Well, Jim, as we wrap this up, an important note here. Friday night, November 17th, head-to-head -head SmackDown versus Collision and Rampage in Los Angeles at the Kia Forum, SmackDown at the Ford Center in Evansville. Evansville, Indiana? Evansville, Indiana. That's the next head-to-head. -head. I didn't even know. The Ford Center is either new or they've renamed the, uh, the place they had, Roberts Stadium. At fucking Henry Ford, he's, he's trying to get into everything. So, well, Collision and Rampage will be three hours, so it's three hours of AEW against two hours of SmackDown. Right, because there's no there way they can do an overrun because they're going to run into the evening news on Fox. Yes, but I'm thinking there's a line from Billy Jack. They better wait till a couple more hours of AEW shows up to make it even. They're going to get fucking hammered. And again, that's the thing besides the fact that AEW lost more viewers this week from their normal than NXT gained from their normal. Collision was getting hammered by WWE pay-per-views, premium live events, whatever they call them these days, that were on Peacock or you had to pay to see on television. This is the Fox Network. There'll be, you know, six cat burglars and, you know, a fucking drunken bum watching Collision that night with the highest rated wrestling program in the world against it, right? One would think. Hey, one last question on this. If you're in this position, you being the general you, not necessarily Tony Khan. Yes. And you know you're up against them again and it's not NXT this time, it's SmackDown. Do you load up the show or do you hang back on things because you know you're not winning? Well, you definitely don't want to do anything that is, you know, of, of a debut of a major new star, a shocking angle, if there is such a thing anymore. You don't want to do it on a show that you know is going to have severely low viewership. Maybe you try to put together the show that will appeal most to people who just want to see good wrestling, since that's the base AEW audience, and try to give them that, but not a shit show, actual just good wrestling, and then do a couple of minor things to advance 
the issues you already have ongoing that you can VTR back the following Wednesday night when you got your regular crowd back. But no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change the face of the game or the game of the face or whatever else they change on that show that's not going to do 300,000 people. And I guess one last thing, an important note to Tony, even the most successful bookers and promoters ever, well, maybe not the promoters so much, but the bookers need time off, need a break, need to refresh their, what was Ernie Ladd's expression? Refresh the brain or re-ring the brain? Your brain is like a sponge. And when it has absorbed all the knowledge that it can, you must take the time to wring it out. Again, it's his company. It's hard to just do that, especially when there's really just bad infrastructure and, you know, the executive. Well, and, and we know that there's not a lot of people raising their hand going, hey, Tony, you might not want to do that on TV, so who's going to do it in his absence? And then who are the fucking whippersnappers going to listen to? 